Hello everyone, thank you once again. This is Crunch Econometrics and we are still on our Gatch modeling series. So far, I have made six videos and this is the seventh one on how to estimate exponential Gatch models. By way of advice, please, it is important that you watch our videos one to six in sequential orders. Please do not skip any, do not jump. It will amount to you skipping the chapters of your textbook, okay? So please try to watch these videos in sequential order. All right, similar to a T gauge, the exponential gauge model as developed by Nelson 1991 is to capture the leverage effect of shocks. And these shocks could be policies, information, news, incidents and events on the financial market. It allows for the testing of asymmetries. When good news filter into the market, assets tend to enter a state of tranquility and volatility slows, that is, decreases. But when bad news hits the market, assets enter a state of turbulence and volatility increases. Unlike the T-Gatch model, the E-Gatch uses the log of the variance of the series as the dependent variable and not the level of the conditional variance. So here we have the specification for the conditional variance for the e gauge PQ model. This is how the model is specified. Uh, one of the viewers commented and asked me to do a video on how to use the MS Word equation editor because he wondered how I'm able to construct this equation. So I may end up making a video to show viewers how to easily use the equation editor. It makes your equation come out neater and better. So here we have on the left hand side, the log of the variance series HT. And this makes the leverage effect exponential instead of it being quadratic. And this ensures that the estimates are non-negative. Phi here is the constant. Eta represents the arch effects. Lambda gives asymmetric effects and theta is our usual gauge effects. The hypothesis is that if all the lambdas are equal to zero, then the model is symmetric. But if lambda is negative, it implies that bad news will generate larger volatility than good news. So if lambda is negative, it implies that bad news, which are negative shocks, will generate larger volatility than positive shocks. So, Look at this equation clearly. This is how you specify the e gauge PQ model. Our main coefficient of concern is that lambda be negative to enforce the condition that negative shocks invokes greater volatility than uh, positive shocks. So we are concerned about the outcome of lambda. So now we proceed to e-views and carry out the estimation of an e-gauge model. So this is the estimation of um, the t-gauge. I modify this now. I click on estimate. The first thing I'm going to do is to revert my threshold order from 1 to 0. Then I come to model here, open this, and I select e-gauge. You can see asymmetric order is given as 1, which is what I have in my model specification. Let me check my options again to see that I have my EVS legacy. It's all there. So back to specification. I'm not changing any other thing. Everything is fine. My error distribution is still my normal Gaussian. So I click OK. So here we have the result for the e gauge. The e views uh, has come now uh, recorded my coefficients as C3 to 6. C3 is a constant. C4 is the arch coefficient, C5 is the asymmetric coefficient as explained, and C6 is the gauge coefficient. So now let's move over to PowerPoint. So ensure that you have a similar specification as mine. Make sure you change your model to e gauge um, asymmetric order as I use this one. I've been using EGIS legacy. So just try to model something similar to what I just did. So now let's look at the results. Again, I'm going to skip interpreting the main equation 
It has given in my previous gash videos, so avail yourself of them for you to know how to interpret the main equation. Please watch my previous gash videos. Our coefficient of interest is the asymmetric term. We can see it's negative at minus 0 0.0442, as you can see here, and significant at the 1% level. So this tells us that by the time you compute it, you have bad news um, aggravating uh, the behavior of this series. But if you look at it even in exponential terms, if you take the exponent of the coefficient, you have 0 0.6428. So if you want to interpret even the behavior of the series using the exponential um, computation of this series, you can clearly see that bad news we have a larger effect on the volatility of the series than good news. The exponent of negative 0 0.044197 is 64.28%. Remember, we have uh, the log series as a dependent variable. So now let me show you how you can calculate or derive the total leverage effects. If UT minus 1 is negative, the total effect of UT minus 1 on the dependent variable is computed as this. This is how you compute it. And if UT minus 1 is positive, the total effect on the dependent variable is computed as this. Now we have been given the value of lambda, which is this. I will leave you to crunch out this computation. So these are the references to help you to solidify understanding of GACH models and their variants. So avail yourself of them. Thank you so much for the support I've received so far since I began the series. I am so grateful to all my viewers from India, Pakistan, Kenya, Cameroon, New Zealand, America, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Brazil, Kuwait, Iraq. So many countries, so many countries. Thank you so much for your support. Amsterdam, I thank you. I thank you so much. Malaysia, I appreciate you. China, Japan, students all over the world, thank you for your comments, for how my channel has helped you to move away from where you were before to a better place in the field of econometrics. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with the next video on GACH modeling and diagnostics. If you have not subscribed, please do so and stay with me.